You just won a first crown trip to Hawaii. Yeah, it's time to go on vacation for two Woo. days. Two days. Yeah. We'll be gone for two days. That's it. That's how we'll handle it. <laughs> that's all we can. That's Get all we have in the budget. See ya. <laughs> this trip has been brought to you by. <laughs> <laughs>
strike the window pane. The hairs on the back of your neck stand on end as you get the feeling that you're being watched. As you look outside, there's no one in yours or the neighbor's yard. Glance down the hall, reveals nothing. You call out and wait for a moment, but the only sound is the ticking clock and the increasingly heavy rain outside. As you turn back to the bookcase, a figure stands in the corner barely two feet from you. Your heart <sighs> leaps for a moment as your eyes strain to adjust as this moment kind of drags on for longer than it is welcome. Just as the tingle of fight or flight kind of starts to set in your bones, it clicks. It's just the mirror. You breathe the sigh of relief as you click on the desk lamp, and as you turn back, a foreign, a foreign and primal figure gazes at you from the mirror like prey. Sheer black shawls par partially cover strange runes on its arms, and dark, root-like veins sprout from a gemmed collar embedded in its neck. It mimics your movement for a moment, and as your gazes meet, burning pyres, a staircase into the earth, a monster over a patient, a building in flames, a smoldering corpse, a beating heart in a jar all flash across your sy synapse simultaneously. As your divisions begin to blister your cortex, you hear a cold yet soothing voice say, It's time. And suddenly, with a snap, you awaken, panting in the bunk, drenched through the sheets as the first lights of morning streak in through the empty quarters, and you shake off this nightmare one, once again. Quarters have become cluttered and lived in over the last week or so. A baseball bat leans against Rory's bunk, and an orla ornately woven dreamcatcher hangs by the hanks. You gather yourself and uh, head into the parlor, where Hank and Rory are uh, sipping coffee and chatting a bit. Enter. Well, good, good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning. You sleep okay? Um, I, I think so. I think so. Uh, just gotta shake the shake the grogginess. It's been a it's been a busy week, hasn't it? Yeah. <sighs> Hank, you got anything new? Uh. Well, we got some little bit of progress. We got at least a uh, picture, so hopefully today I might be able to actually find where he's going. Okay. Oh. <clears throat> so catch me up. You guys been chatting about anything this morning? Any uh, updates? Clearly no no leads, but any, any thoughts on anything we could... Uh, just check into, I guess. Yeah, who makes the coffee? Because it tastes like shit. Oh, let me get a cup of this shitty coffee and maybe we can figure out a way to fix it. <laughs> Something we maybe can actually control. For once, right? <laughs> yeah, for once. 
Oh. How about you guys? How long you been up? <clears throat> oh, maybe an hour or so. Yeah, same. You sure about that, Hank? You don't look like you've slept at all. Well, actually, I've been getting some of the best sleep I've had in a while for like just this week. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> well, it's the dream catcher. It helps. You know, well, people don't believe that shit, but it helps. I believe it. Not have nightmares, or that's putting it nicely. Yeah, yeah. Um, Charlie made it for me uh, years ago. So it's the only thing that actually uh, lets me get a good night. That's the guy who gave you the watch, right? Yeah. Yeah. As you uh kind of take a moment and scan the room, you'd notice that two makeshift two ways have been uh set in the corner. They've been uh Bex's pet project for the last week and it looks like the prototypes are finally done. Sorry, two makeshift what? Two way radios. Oh, two ways. Gotcha. It was like a two-way mirror? What am I doing with that? Oh, yeah, sorry. No, you're good, you're good. Uh, two-way, yeah, okay, it's cool. <clears throat> um, who, who, who is, so, so is someone there with them, or they're just sitting there on the table? They're just sitting there right there at the, at the moment. Sure. <clears throat> Hank, do you think you, you should take one of those with you? Sorry. Uh, I think it's going to take a little bit for... To be able to get them like installed, but I don't know if my car will have room for it. I should, yeah. I mean, I wonder if we can hook one up here and have it, you know, so you can communicate with us sort of back to base. You know, speaking of which, it feels nice to have a place to sort of go back to now. It's uh pretty incredible that we didn't get thrown out, and I'll look at Livy. I was a little surprised when you said that it was cool. I mean, Google yeah. stand at my place, but I'm glad you guys had a roof. Yeah. Um, just change your heart, I guess. Um. <clears throat> yeah. As a... I don't know. Is there a insight check that I could do? <laughs> <laughs> is there some you, form of that in you, Call of Cthulhu? I think it's psychology, psychology. It? To get a If you want to do that. Yeah, yeah. Sir, if you'd like to do that. Uh, green, right? Yeah. Yes, the green. Nope. Helps if I scroll <laughs> down, right? Yeah, you doing it too, Hank? Yeah. <clears throat> Uh-oh. Hank, uh... Hmm. <laughs> Actually, maybe it would be best if if uh, if Melly tells you what Hank notices. Uh, as Livy turns away from Rory's gay gaze, uh, Hank notices Livy touch touches her, you know, her choker. And um, whisper something under her breath. Okay. Just like, yeah. Would you kindly does really work? So, yeah. I'm just like flinching from the taste of the coffee. I don't notice anything. <laughs> um. Wonder who's yeah. riding with me today. Uh, is it one of the knights or? This place seems to be all week. Is it Just been a different guy every week, or are you making friends? Hey, it seems that way. I've been working with Bex a little bit lately with the with the two ways. So, but you've been working on those. I've been helping him. He he does most of the work. You know, I I just kind of like look and hand him things and try to figure out what the fuck he's doing. But hmm. picking up a little by little. Nice. That's awesome to have someone show you the ropes on things that you're interested in, for sure. 
Hey, man, it's just one more tool for the toolbox. <clears throat> so you said we had to, we have to wait for them to finish? Well, we yeah. have stuff to, I mean, we still got to finish <clears throat> those, those runes, right? Yeah, no, Maybe. absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. You you remember what I showed you, right? We've just yeah, got I mean, a few... we've been doing it all week, so. Yeah, yeah. We just um, we just have a small small section to to wrap up. If you want to go ahead and get started on that, we could do that. How uh, yeah. how's the kid doing? Um, I I mean, wouldn't mind going to check. You have yeah. been there like over the last week. Yeah. Doing the rooms oh. and the ceiling. You're doing the rooms her in her room. room. In her room. Yeah, I, I mean, so this what... morning, I wouldn't mind going to check. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Fact, yeah. I just was... So... Yeah, totally, totally. So have we have we noticed any progress, or has it been pretty much the, the She's same? She's stable. As... She's healing from her wound. So she's doing well on that front. Um, but other than that, she... She stirs occasionally, but, like, nothing... She's still unconscious. She's still in the coma. Um, thinking, they, they were thinking uh, long term at this point, considering it's been a few days now. So it could be months. I would like to, from this point forward, read the paper every morning and see if there's any mention of Councilman Ellsworth in the paper at all. Because um, like, I know he's like he's in an election now, so there's probably like you know buzz about him. Okay. <sighs> That's a good call. Yeah, and also just like I'll scan the morning paper, see what's up in the world. You know what I mean? Because we haven't fucking really been in touch with the outside world <laughs> for a fucking while. At all, truly. Yeah. Yeah, you can probably have... don't even know if the sun is out. You can have one of the uh, knights maybe bring you back a newspaper. Next time yeah, I go off awesome. yeah. um, But as you kind of uh, wrap up your discussion, <clears throat> kind of to, uh, begin to finish your coffee, so that you hear um, the downstairs door open, close, and somebody begin to ascend the stairs. After a moment, Bex rounds the corner, rounds the banister with a uh, messenger bag over his shoulder. Here's you guys a nod. Morning, everybody. Good morning. What does Bex look like? Bex is a. Uh, you've last session you only saw really um, the back of him because he was rummaging around in the in the car for the radio. But, yeah. uh, he has, uh, he's rusted brown skin and, uh, he's a bit skinnier, um, but he is very tall and a bit lanky, um, uh -huh. and, uh, he wears glasses kind of around his neck, like old man glasses, you know, librarian sure. glasses. Um, and puts them on f to do work and stuff occasionally. Oh. So, um, as he kind of walks over with the messenger bag, he kind of plops it down on the dining room table. And, uh, kind of looks at you beaming. Well, I got the, uh, photo developed. And I got a couple other things for you. I also got your, your supplies, Livy. And, uh, well, I also stopped by that car you asked me to and... Um, at the uh, impound and snatched up a couple of uh, what, what I could find, so. Um, yeah, right. So he kind of begins pulling out stuff, uh, a uh, assortment of uh, ingredients, um, what looks to be a, a uh, big uh, typical uh, investigator size picture, um, <laughs> and uh, a. Uh, bag of uh what looks like uh livy and rory's personal effects thank you yeah no problem we really appreciate that for sure uh it, you know 
whatever Sam says, I, I try to do for him. Appreciate you uh, doing what you can to help us. Mm-hmm. The two rays really, uh, honestly, that, that went a long way. Um, should it be able to get the uh, things fired up and going, um, I just need to find a way to mark, mount it into Egg's car. Sure, we just we can break up some. Oh yeah, worst case That's scenario, good. I can just put it on the floor, but <laughs> figured uh, we don't want to slide it around. Um, anyway, uh, so um, what's the, what's the, uh, has Sam stopped by, or was he here last night? Uh, I haven't seen him yet. Yeah, I haven't seen him this morning. Oh, uh, maybe he'll be back tomorrow. I don't know, a little later today. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, well, if Hank's okay with it, I, I don't have uh, any classes I gotta I assist today. I can I can go out and stake out with him. Yeah. Hank, that work for you? Yeah. yeah. No, yeah, that's fine. <clears throat> yeah, I kind of want to <clears throat> see how these things work, honestly. I've been wanting to field test them for a little while. Yeah, you guys gonna good. mount it now? Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and get that started while you guys uh, get ready. Okay. And he kind of uh, lumbers over to the uh, to grab the uh, sorry <laughs> the two way and uh, picks it up and brings it back downstairs um, and uh, disappears. You hear the car door open and some some <clears throat> minor tinkering downstairs as uh, you kind of assess uh, the items that you just got. Um, as far as the ingredients, um, there's dried henna leaves, lemon juice, sugar, lavender, and kajaput oil, or uh, henna mixture, a uh, henna paste. Um, the uh, picture itself that was taken um, is a picture of actually a bespectacled, a bespectacled woman with a light hair. It was about in her like maybe late 20s, early 30s. Um, and uh, there's a plethora of things like Rory's wallet, um, some, his keys, uh, um, mirrors, that kind of stuff. Anything that was kind of on your person, um, kind of in the last bag. But there's also a sealed envelope that's a little bit crumpled um, with Livy's name written on it in Georgia's hand. this i don't know um <clears throat> livy will start to open it um maybe take a step back just in case there's something wild on it okay. um as you open the envelope there's a snake no i'm just kidding um, ah! <laughs> the uh oh, i wanted peanuts do you want me to read this out loud, or...? Actually, you. as you read it, you oh, hear yeah, it in yeah. Georgia's voice. Oh, yes. Levy, I wished we had more time. There's so much you need to know, and I do not know what will become of us. I hope we can put a stop to them soon, but the reality is that there are no guarantees. I can, at the very least, offer one last semblance of guidance. Rupert is right that this life is like a cave, but only at the start. As you dig deeper, it becomes more of a mine, endless in an abyss. For the most part, we find nothing but rocks, until finally a single small nugget of glittering truth surfaces. It's exhilarating, it, an incomprehensible experience that drives us deeper and deeper still. But even miners know to bring canaries when they push further into the depths. It's a great burden to delve so deep, and I'm so proud of you. I'm sorry things turned out the way they did, and I can imagine what you think and what you must think of me. Keep your canary close, Livy. Be safe. Georgia. I think, Rory, I think she actually 
sent a kind note and was heartfelt in it. Hmm. Uh, it's essentially just a be careful note. When do you think she wrote that? It hints it hints a bit more recent than the last time we actually put eyes on her, but I don't understand how It seems like it was written right before everything went down. Hmm, okay. As you kind of look at the letter, you actually notice there's a little bit of smudging on it. And you remember she was using the same kind of notebook paper for doing her translations from the Library of Onus, for the ritual. So she might have done it that same night. Ah, uh, okay. Thank you for that context. So maybe she didn't mean as much harm? I I'm sorry, this note is a lot to take in right now, Rory. I uh Can we read it or Uh yeah, yeah, here you go. You can uh yeah. Yeah, I'll take it and I'll read it. <clears throat> huh. Well This is that uh that Schultz woman? Yeah. Yeah. The greenhouse lady. If were you, uh, you got a minute, I want to bend you your physic. Oh, me? Yeah. Sure. The uh, Hank will uh, kind of step out to the next room. I'll give Livy like a... <clears throat> <laughs> Livy will up. start to excuse herself and just say, I, I'll start the runes. You'll meet me, uh... Yeah, yeah, I in, got you. In I'll Gabby's? You. Okay. Don't forget your canary. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm waiting for him to show up. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, as you pull the Livy pulls a mortar and pestle and begins to make the henna paste, you guys step out. What's up? Look, um, I, I know I haven't exactly been helpful with the whole garden thing. It's not something that I like talking about. Oh, but with the way things are moving, uh, look, I, I've, I've never told people this like, at all, so just. He's like really not trying to, almost stalling himself out. <laughs> This place, they do these, these experiments, poking, prodding, stress tests, I, I don't remember everything, but people disappeared, people died, Very, like, and he, you can see him, like, actually, like, trying to like hold his hand, do something with his hands, and there is like a little bit of a shake to them. The greenhouse? I've never heard of anybody coming back from there. The garden was fucked up. You were in the garden? He just nods. Like that Same. was bad enough. I can't imagine what they do with the greenhouse. Never mind the regular abuse from orderlies, but... So if they were gonna take her, that kid you got? No. We'll fight tooth and nail to keep her out of there. Glad to hear that. Years ago. Hi, I'm huge. How bad? Mm. Sorry. Um, <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean? It was about 20 years ago. 
when that happened. When I was a friend of mine, we, uh, we had a plan. It mostly worked. You burnt it down. Uh, he he did most of the burning. Um, was... You and Charlie? No. Hmm. Charlie came later. No, it was a friend of mine in there. A few friends I had in there. Uh, Teddy. Where's Teddy now? Teddy didn't make it out. Plan mostly worked. Mostly. It's part of why I can't sleep. Part of why I don't want to sleep. And that was the Weatherwoods then too? I guess so. You didn't know who it was then. You just knew they had you. Supposed and why to you? Be, it was supposed to be a way out. Go figure. A way off the street? Yeah. Way out of my current situation at the time. So they made you some kind of offer? Is that what you're saying? Do, do a clinical trial and get out of your shit. I see. Have a free life. But they never let you back out. Why would they let an undesirable out on the fucking street? Not when they can keep them in prison for the rest of their life. Hmm. But here I, I never saw anything about the, in the paper about kids going missing or anything. This is all consensual agreements that, you know. More or less, yeah. It's nice guys that they play. And what they do? As far as what? What were the clinical trials? Oh, well, sleep tests. But I don't remember much. What were they looking that. for? Do you know? It was sixteen. I, I, I don't know, man. So it's like twenty years ago. Was there anything they were trying to push you towards? Get you to dream? Get you to... I don't know. Sleep? Did you try to Can't keep you from it. sleeping? Yeah, okay. Okay, I get it. It's traumatic. I'm sorry you went through that, but this information, it's definitely... It's helpful for us. Keep most of that to yourself, if you can. What do you mean? My involvement, anyway. Yeah, sure. Sure. Do they know everybody... that you're still around? I... Not that I'm aware of. Kept out of the line of sight so far. That's good. You think they rebuilt this greenhouse from, or this garden from scratch? They had to have rebuilt if the actively still working out of it. You're calling it a garden, but it's not outside, right? It's just like what they call the place. It's just what they call the place. Yeah. A nice pretty name for a fucking Some fucked up black shit. hole. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Did you uh did you see anything like this? You know, all of this when you were in there? Runes or I don't know, psych psychic visions or cultists, you know what I mean, like this crazy shit. It was one time. <clears throat> a little early in. I, I didn't know what I was into at the time. Uh, this, this one girl after one of the tests, they said that she was impregnated. And, and just took her off. What the she fuck? Transferred her to the greenhouse. So I don't. I don't fucking know, man. Jesus, I don't know what to say. 
That's, a lot of uh, them disappeared that way. A lot of... <coughs> we, we should we should check to see if uh, Sam is back. Sure. You okay? I will be. Alright. As you head back out, the uh, oh. as you head back out, the uh, henna paste is all mixed up, and uh, Vivi's in the process of uh, basically putting it into a little bag and tying off the end, getting ready to reapply it um, to refresh the runes. Bex comes back upstairs. And uh, shortly after you come up, or come out, and uh, kind of beelines to Hank. Oh, do you want to run a dry run right now? Just stay up here. Uh, I'll, I'll be right back. And he runs uh, okay. back downstairs. And after a moment, uh, oh, go ahead. No, is, is Livy still here? She's just mixing the paste. Yeah, she's just uh, yeah. getting it ready to apply. Yeah, gotcha. Um, after, sorry, after a moment, uh, you hear, uh, Bex. Breaker, breaker, one nine, breaker, breaker, one nine, testing, testing, one, two, three. Damn. Oh. So what do we do? We just pick this up and... Yeah, I think we'll, uh, go over, grab the, the receive the house peep and answer back. Oh, one nine, one nine, I, I, I got you here, copy. You hear from the, uh, downstairs... And like, <laughs> he's like, well, this... uh, the the test the test worked. Uh, yeah, yeah. All right, all right, cool. Uh, I just want to make sure that. Oh, look, hold on, this thing's smoking. All right, uh, and he <laughs> hangs oh, up abruptly. Hank like puts the receiver down, and he's like, his whole mood just like changes, like almost in as he's like, this is a fucking game changer. Oh man, we gotta get this in my car. <laughs> Oh fuck! <laughs> and uh, this may be the first time we see Hank smile. <laughs> yeah. Um, and as uh that shenanigans begins going, uh, where you kind of sit down with Livy and roll up your sleeve, as uh, he begins to apply the rune, reapply the rune to your arm. Hmm. And this so, is something we've done every day for the last uh, couple it, days? Or it fades after about week. like a week. So she's just redoing it now. Yeah. For the first time this week. And mm -hmm. then we're okay. And then you'll be good for another week. Gotcha. So, so Moon, um, one of the things that Livy and Rory spoke about during the, the last session was, you know, just kind of trusting each other and discussing how to help. Mm -hmm. uh, by any means necessary I, I, Livy like feels a bit compelled to like kind of hint without saying it um, at this moment because it's because Hank is left right Hank is uh, immersed um, he went downstairs uh, after smelling smoke um, there's a fire being put out. Uh, just a small fire. Just electric. It's small. Uh, no worries. Um, and then you start to hear, uh, tools. Like, in a, uh, if, if there was power drills back then, you'd hear, like, the ratcheting of that right now. But they don't have that. So. Gotcha. Lights gotcha. tinkering. So, so just a whole bunch of elbow grease and flickering yeah, lights. Exactly. Gotcha. <laughs> so, <clears throat> Okay. Um, well, I think Livy will be cognizant of that and just kind of talk a little bit, a little bit low so that only Rory can hear. Um, <clears throat> uh, you know, it wasn't just a coincidence, Rory, that, uh, that we're still here, right? What do you mean? Uh, we 
needed more time. And I just want you to know that I made sure of that. But I, you know, don't want... I don't want you to worry about it, essentially, is what I'm saying. I'm doing my part, making sure that we're okay. So you did what? You... I... I made Sam let us stay? Essentially. I don't think we really had a choice otherwise. Huh. But it's... Are there only... consequences to that, Millie? Really? Livy? Uh, I mean, I understand using it on our enemies, but on our friends? I, um, I can't say for certain, uh, what the, <clears throat> what the consequences are. I can't, I, It was, it was necessary. It was, we, we couldn't, we couldn't not. What do you mean? We needed more time, Rory. Otherwise, we would be out there and not here. I know, but, but the, the two-way radio, the, the, all the help we're getting, the, the nights, Yeah, no, it's good. It is good. <clears throat> it's... What about Sam, though? I mean, is he... Gonna be okay? Sam's fine. Sam's fine. He's... He's fine. Does yeah. he know that you did that? Uh, he doesn't quite. Right, how could he? I, it didn't, it didn't hurt. I didn't, I didn't hurt him. I hear you. It's just, that's, I don't know, that's powerful magic, you know? I've never seen that shit happen without consequences. I mean, you saw how fucked up uh, Georgia was, you know? Those powers, whatever she could do, uh, came with a cost. I... I know that. I saw that. I, I understand that, but I think... It's... It's... It's worth it. It's worth it. For... Worth what? It's worth protecting Gabby. Are you saying you wouldn't do whatever you had to do to keep her safe? I'm saying it's... Cost is worth what? It's worth the risk. Your life? Of whatever... My life? Whatever? Whatever happens to me. This is... Directly my burden to bear however uh however the the recoil decides to come back i'm the user so no, I... <laughs> I don't understand how you can think that after everything that we've been through what do you it's mean just, it's not just you it's you and me, protecting her. It's the two of us, okay? Yes, but the, but I but I'm 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 doing my part. I'm, can't you see? I'm doing my part. Yeah, but if something happens to you, I can't do this on my own. I need you to be okay. Mm-hmm. 
Something will register to Livy and she'll just try to push it back into her mind. <laughs> As, uh... Okay. Okay. You say okay. You drive the car, but I gotta know where I'm going. You know what I mean? Absolutely. As you kind of wrap up this conversation, you hear, oh, of course. <laughs> As you wrap up this conversation, uh, you hear somebody come up the stairs. And as you kind of like quickly quiet down, um, Hank kind of emerges around the banister and uh, looks over and is like, oh, in the, the, uh, sorry, <laughs> uh, he comes up the banister and uh, lets you know that the uh, radio is all mounted to the car and they're good to go. Wow. That was quick. Nice job. So Hank, you're off with them, yeah? Um, me and Bex, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, be safe out there. He'll uh, grab the picture and just kind of get in a look at it. Hmm. What, sorry, can you remind me like where the picture came from? What that picture is? It's, uh, so the stakeout, you guys took pictures of everybody. Yep. And Bex had them developed and ran by what uh, files they could, and they found okay. Carter to be, and they found a match, basically. Okay, and This is the picture saying. of okay. Carter. It's a picture of Carter. Gotcha. Okay. Well, we got runes to write and, I don't know, wrongs to undo. So, uh, what, what's, what's our plan? With with her. With Carter. Yeah. Or with Gabby. <laughs> Obviously, we know the plan for Gabby. Yeah. Um. No. Uh. Carter. I don't know. I think we got a few um, a few decisions to make in the coming days. I don't want to put you on the spot, but um, everything you just told me it's got me worried. There's still um. They're doing what they were doing 20 years ago. They're hurting kids. Just looks conflicted. Just kind of mumbles. Something about no women, no children under his breath as he kind of begins to make his way back to the stairs. What was that? I mean, our, our plan is to, is it to have an audience with Carter? Is it to obtain Carter? I, I, Tail I mean, Carter, find out where they're living so that you can, well, all right. Uh, sorry, I ended up doing mm -hmm. a re- I'm just gonna talk meta right here for a second. Um, I ended up rewriting this and it was ended up being Bex rather than Samuel. So I don't have the strategist right here. But over the last week, Samuel has talked to you a couple times and elaborated the plan was uh, basically to stake out, find out who their person, their eyes were, as it were, mm -hmm. which was Carter. Um, the idea is to incapacitate in any way um, Carter and which will create a blind spot for you guys to operate in where you can before they get a reinforcement you can make your move so we have to take out Carter is the objective in one way or another however you guys translate that objective yes I see okay so yeah is that what Hank is doing right now is your guy you guys are gonna tail Carter yeah and they're okay. just trying to determine where they they're place of living or where they're staying Understood. right now mm -hmm. so that when the time comes so you can I mean, make a move yeah understood once we have the blind spot right like once we've 
taking care of Carter in one way or another. Mm -hmm. The plan is either, you know, we, we have a few options of what we want to do. Um, Hank, are you, is Hank still here? Hank, are you, yeah. you yeah. gone all the way? He's, yeah. he's just heading toward the stairs. He hasn't, like, made it to the stairs yet. Yeah, I think the question is... Uh, he's more wondering, of... like, what did we want to do with Carter? Oh. Uh, okay. Hence the... His confliction, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh... Sounds like we should bring Carter here. Wait. He just kind of, like, stops and turns around and looks at you. Are you sure that's a good idea? How else are we supposed to get more information? We want to bring her here. The place where we are actively hiding from. I mean, I With think people... if there are no witnesses... Well, these civilians come in here. We can't have this kind of shit going on. Civilians don't come in here. I mean, the knights do. They're not like, directly implicated in what we're doing. Uh oh, fair. But it's, I, I, yes, I do. I, but like, uh, they're like part time volunteers coming here. <laughs> <you know? laughs> fair, fair, fair. This is uh, yeah. Look, I, I'm all for like doing shit. Look, but... I think the question is are we incapacitating Carter or are we killing Carter? Right, because we don't we don't need information from her. We need her to not be around. Yeah. So we can make a move, right? That's the main. She's objective. she's held. Okay. The, okay. Basically, what Hank has found out is that she's. I mean, I don't know that she necessarily is the one who can scry, but she operates that. She's she's the, the flow scryer, of information. Right? She's the scryer. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so let's say we incapacitate her. Where do we put her? Where do we put her up? Where do we hide her? I mean, in my opinion, I'm still owed a few pretty heavy favors. So I could try to pull one. Is we'll she blackballed? I was. Was as good. I do so have my I garage. Called, I called was... Mother Mary at the orphanage. A few of my friends seemed very apologetic. And how do we know that she will not be tracked in a sense? Well, I think the idea is that she is the tracker. Without her, there will be no tracking. We'll have about right, 12 but... hours to do what we gotta do before anybody else comes in. So for so for Carter, just so I'm clear, is <laughs> kind of stepping back, the, for Carter, that's like they are looking through a one-way mirror no one is going to see back i just want to be clear i don't know she is the scryer once we take her out we'll have about 12 hours to do whatever it is that we need to do before they know that we've made a move before they have a new scryer scryer to try to find her got it got oh, it or okay. us yeah. for that yes. matter got it got it got it I mean, I, I, I do also have the garage. I think we can stow her in there temporarily. And we could also, I mean, I don't know. Yeah. And, Hank, are you sure you want to potentially give up your garage? I, I think going with a favor from Rory on an, an undocumented location that may not be tied back to you would probably be best. I could say worst case. We could also knock her out and leave her in her home, you know? Oh, that's too easy. They're going to find her right there and wake her up. Shoot. I mean, how long is it going to take for them to know she's missing? 12 hours, right? Uh, I don't I don't know what their protocol is afterwards. Maybe they have to check in at the end of the day. I don't know. Yeah, well, maybe we need to make a check in at the end of the day then. Hmm. Make Carter check in? Or I'm make saying, a... I, I mean, I, I, I don't want to... I don't make you do that any more than you already have. Either way, but, um, this is all a decision that can be made later, because all we're trying okay. to do is tail them. We'll be making a move and deciding this after Exception we... There. Yeah. Yeah, 
Okay. That's not true. When we put everything into motion. We have everybody together to make the decision. Right. Yeah. We can put okay. the plan in motion there. Um, but for right now, it's just tailing, getting the runes all done, and... Uh, yeah. I think grand scheme, you know, the, the, the plan is taking Carter out of the investigation. Yeah. Or out of the, uh, out of the equation. Equation for a, a while. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How we do that exactly, we got some conversations to have. You just won a first crown trip to Hawaii. Yeah, it's time to go on vacation for two Woo. days. Two days. Yeah. We'll be gone for two days. That's it. That's how we'll handle it. <laughs> that's all we can, that's all we have in the budget. See ya. <laughs> this trip has been brought to you by... <laughs> Cthulhu. Cigarettes. Lots of <laughs> cigarettes. <laughs> um, and, uh, okay, so with all this established, um, just to kind of move us along a little bit here, um, Livy goes ahead and uh, finishes up the rune uh, on Rory. Um, Hank hops in the car with Bex and heads out. And, uh, as, uh, you let it sit and the stain happens, you wipe it away, and you're left with a brand new, uh, refreshed rune. You guys also head out and make your way to the church, the, uh, the orphanage. And with that, we'll kind of cut over to, uh, Hank and Bex. As they make their way over to the uh, USSA's office. Um, as uh, morning traffic bustles around as you uh, head, make your way to Wall Street, um, you begin to slow down as you uh, get close to the USSA's office. The building's bright brickwork is uh, pristine in comparison to the older neighboring buildings. And, and you see workers bustle inside, past the shades of arched windows and cast iron bars on the first floor. Hank parks across the street and uh, finds a perfect spot where he can has, have an eye on the front door and down the side alley. It's being on both exits at once. He turns the car off as cars roll past in each direction uh, before uh, setting Carter's picture on the dash. Bex kind of gets comfortable and uh, goes to pick up the receiver and is like, oh, I want to use it. Oh. Nobody's at the firehouse, are they? I mean, unless somebody else came in, I think uh, Livy and Rory had it off. Mm. Crap. He puts it back down. We'll try it later. So. That's. I know you didn't really have to come down here to do this, but I. I appreciate the second set of eyes. Yeah, anytime. I kind of like this. Uh, like being a detective. You know. It's mostly boring work. You just sit and watch people. Well, I guess it depends on the person. Like, honestly, like, I... I don't know. I already enjoy people watching, so this is like doing it as a profession. But Where do you go? We're not getting paid. What? Where do you go to people watch? Oh, parks. Diners. There's this chess group that meets up that I like to watch. <laughs> Because there's, I don't know, it's always the same, but it's always entertaining, you know? It's a nice little place on the uh, south side of the park over there in Harlem. Oh, yeah? Oh. Like, just off the, just off the river there. Nice oh, okay. Little. Over by the bridge? Yeah, gets a little oh. busy. Oh, okay. I'll have, to, I'll have to sit there for a little bit. i do that one day. Yeah, it's not the best one. Well, I figured out what was, it was, <laughs> silly me, some of the coding was just a little too close and arced. That's what caused the fire earlier. 
we gotta get it all sorted out. We get some putty on there, so it'll be good. Easy fixes are nice. Yeah. Okay. You can use gum too, but it doesn't last as long. Um, okay. Just so. like taking mental notes. <laughs> so as they uh, kind of banter, we'll uh, kind of drift away from the scene as the day kind of spirals on for them. And we'll pop over to uh, Livy and Rory who are currently who uh <clears throat> Livy and Rory you arrive at the uh, orphanage in Harlem in the park in an alley nearby as you uh exit and uh make your way to the side door Rory produces a key and uh slides into lock before they enter as you slink through the back kitchens and into the uh, lobby and begin to climb the stairs. You hear a door behind you open as uh, Mother Mary calls you. You know, it's been a long time since I caught you sneaking a girl upstairs. <laughs> yeah, a little different now. A little different now. She smiles. And are you going to introduce me? Ah, uh, yes. Sorry, I... Uh, this is Livy. Livy, Mary. Uh, she She'll runs this place. Out. She, uh... Livy would uh, reach out her hand. Offers a, uh... A light handshake. And, uh... So... Uh, she pulls out from just her sleeve. Like a, like a monk, apparently. Um, a, uh... Sealed envelope. And extends it to you. Uh, or... Uh, Rory. What's this? Uh, Orsino asked me to get this to, to you. Okay. Uh, I have no idea. But, uh, Did he say anything else? No. Just said it was important and get it to you as soon as I saw you. Okay. I'll read it. I'll open it. As you, uh, rip it open and uh, flip it open. There's just a simple scrawled message in the center of the page. You want to burn him? Let me help. Tony's at five o'clock. Come alone. And the uh, letters OG are signed at the bottom. Rory? Yeah. What, what does Orsino have to say? Uh. We don't have to talk about this right here if you want to wait. No, I, it's, not, it's not about that. It's, she, she's already kind of like turned, she kind of waved and headed back into the other room. So you're kind of alone in the lobby. I'll hand Libby the letter. The audacity. Do you, do you trust him? Um. Rory, I don't... Why are you hesitating? Well, it's just you, there are a lot of moving parts in a business like this, you know? You, uh, but uh, Orsino's been a friend of mine for hmm. a long time. I trust him, yeah. But okay. it doesn't mean that he would make a bad decision. You know? You don't... You don't really have to go alone. You, you know that. Uh, what kind of place is that that he's asking you to go to? Yeah, do I know Tony's? It's uh, the same guy who cooked you a meal. It's Antonio's Italian family restaurant. Gotcha. The same guy who cooked you a meal. It's white, fine, you know, white cloth, tablecloth dining kind of stuff. Yeah, sure. 
Um, but would it be out in the open, or would it be it's like in, it's in a public the back restaurant. dining yeah, room? Yeah, it's like a, I, I would assume it's going to be in like a a, a restaurant. And it's tonight at five. It's, was it for five? Yeah, five p.m. Then I mean, I assume the restaurant will be crowded. If not, if they booked out the whole restaurant, I don't know. Then Orsino's punching above his weight class. <laughs> I, um, I mean, maybe I go judge the scene at, you know, from the front window and then, I don't know, I, I mean, it could be like that time that I was on the, a date and, you know, you sat across the restaurant. I could do that. Um, <clears throat> or maybe Hank, if he's back from the stakeout, no. Yeah. All I'm saying is you don't have to do that alone. Is is all. I, I, I gotta be honest. It makes me a bit nervous. I mean, I could just go in alone. You know, you come with me. I'll go in alone. <laughs> if I need help, I'll call. You know. We'll make a signal. Can you sit yeah, somewhere near a window? I don't know if we can plan for that. But I'll yell if, if I need help. Okay. Okay. What time to is it now? To be honest with you. I'm sorry. It's, it's like, it's still pretty early. It's like maybe 10 o'clock. <clears throat> 10 or 11. Okay. To be honest with you, I think we need all the help that we can get. And if this is help, I'm going to take it. Right? Yeah. Um, should we ask some of the knights to come with? Orsino will get, uh, will get jumpy pretty easy. I don't want to bring... I don't want to bring anyone. Okay. Okay, just a suggestion. <clears throat> After what happened with, um, with, ah, uh, fuck. What the fuck is his name? Sam? Or Not someone else? No. Rupert? No, I was just going to say with, with, I mean. Sorry. Um, I want to throw you a life preserver. <laughs> no, no, you're good. I was going to say like, just what happened with that. Uh, uh, was it Ellsworth who came in the room? It wasn't Ellsworth. It was, uh, I can't remember the name of the guy who came in. It was just like two guys. I feel like there was a main leader guy. Just when, oh. when, when Orsino oh. and I were like in the. Yeah, there was um, Daniels. Daniels. After what happened between us, Daniels. I, I think Orsino might be as as angry as we are. Okay. And if he was working against us, Gabby wouldn't still be here. That's fair. That's fair. Kind of as I this conversation's trust. been going, you've been headed up the stairs back to the room. Continue. Big OG. Um, look, I think you can come with me tonight, but you stay outside. If Orsino's brought in the big guns against us, um, I would be surprised. I think last time I saw him, he was as shocked and as upset as I was. Yeah, I mean, that this man does no... not like uh, to be disrespected, like they disrespected him. Oh, 
Okay. I'm going to trust that you can suss it out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, speaking of which, I'm going to take another look at the letter. Is there, like, anything else on it? Like, markings? I don't know. Is that anything that I would notice that looks weird about it, interesting about it? The signature, is that how he usually signs his letters? His um, the no. one thing that you'll notice is that he kept it real, real short. Like, normally if he wrote a letter, he does, he's not a letter writer. So this is a sure. little bit... But it's handwritten. And it has his... That is his writing for the OG. Okay. And he only really assigns OG when, like, he's trying to like, keep his full name off of something. Okay. Plausible deniability. Yeah. Understood. So, if he's afraid of something getting interrupted, he always keeps it really short. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's finish writing these runes, yeah. You unlock the door to Gabby's room, where she sleeps peacefully. The runes adorn the perimeter of the ceiling, save for a six-foot section that's still blank. You uh, pull over a ladder, and you both pull out chisels and begin to pair the runes and uh, meticulously start to chisel them out as the sounds of tapping and knocking wood kind of goes on inside and we kind of drift back out into the hallway. We're going to take a break here and we will come back with the second half of the episode and see where how all these pins we've set up come down. I'm tumbling down, <laughs> yeah. so. Uh -huh. um, we will be back here in about 10 minutes or so, and uh, see you soon. We'll figure it out eventually. Oh. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. We're going, <laughs> returning for the second part of A Cold Origins two ways. As we return, we're going to be uh, picking up with uh, our character Hank uh, as they the uh, afternoon has kind of the noon has passed and the hours have gone by as they been uh, keeping an eye on things and we kind of come to them in the uh, late afternoon. Let me just get this all like the stage set as I switch things over. As uh, <clears throat> the afternoon sun beats on the roof of Hank's car, as a tra traffic lazily drifts by, Bex lounges alone in the passenger seat, tempting a breeze through a rolled-down window. He wipes the sweat from his brow and checks the time to see it's three o'clock. Car door opens. Hank clambers in with a greasy brown bag and a pair of condensating Mexican Cokes. He produces two ballpark francs with everything on them and hands one over to Bex. The sodas pop open and as they eat, the dogs slowly hit the spot as they chow down. So, uh, we were over in France with the 369? Oh, yeah. I, uh, <clears throat> worked with Samuel. I was his, uh, radio operator for a little while. Wait, how long have you been working on radios, man? You know a lot. Oh, I've been, you know, I, you know, get what you can, tinker with it. I've been doing that since I was little. Go to the junkyards, pull things out, pull them apart, the clocks. Start with clocks. We're out. Always fascinating to me. There's so many gears. Do I mean, you know how many gears are in a clock? Ridiculous. Mind. No. Depends on the clock, honestly. But seriously, like, really fascinating. And then the weights and countermeasures. It's 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 really fascinating to watch. So I I like the way 
understand how things tick. Oh, that makes sense. I appreciate you letting me help out this week. Oh, yeah, no problem. Thanks for your help. Yeah. Um, hey, maybe you can help me with some. I told the kid, I, I mean, he left, but I don't know, he might be coming back. Or but uh, if he does, I, I told him I'd teach him a thing. Would you be willing to help me, like, mock something up? Yeah, sure, what? What are you thinking of? Um, we, what was it, last week we went up and uh, checked the phone lines. You checked Didn't really them? get time to show them. Oh, you're doing like a wiretap or something? Yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, we can always mock that up outside. We can always make a call and let you tap in and see what, you know, just do a dry run with it. Yeah, that is one. Yeah, we can do that. Whenever you want. No problem. As you uh, kind of trail off, um, kind of finish up lunch, roll up the wrappers and finish up the drinks, as uh, you just let traffic kind of lazily whisk by, the door pops open and you're, both you snap, eyes snap to it as uh, you notice a, a spectacle blonde woman exit the side door in the alley and uh, head towards you, merge onto the sidewalk, heading west. She, uh, look like she's getting into a car or anything? Doesn't look like she's heading into a car, and she's not hailing a taxi. Hmm. I wonder if she lives in a bar. I'm, uh, how far away is she right now? She's across the street. If, you know, you're parked on the street like this. Where's the camera? There it is. <laughs> if you're parked on the street like this, they're across mm -hmm. the street heading this way. The sidewalk. Okay. I'm just gonna, uh, keep an eye on her. And, uh, as she's like, cause she's walking on the opposite side of us. Heading. Right? She's walking on the opposites, across the street, the opposite way that you're facing. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna watch her for a little bit, see if she uh, turns off somewhere or goes into a place. As uh, she will kind of makes her way down the block, um, she disappears around the corner as she uh, takes a turn. Uh, Half a block down at the nearest intersection. Well, uh, go ahead and start the car, and I'll kind of go in that direction. As you uh, start the car and uh, pull into traffic, a couple of people beep as you kind of cut across two lanes of traffic to pull a U turn and uh, go to rattle up and turn onto the street she uh, disappeared around. Oh, I just wanted to drive by it and see it and peek down. Okay, you drive by that street and look as uh, further down you see uh, amongst the ped other pedestrians and uh, bustling foot traffic, um, you take notice of Carter. I'm gonna park. For a split second as you go through the intersection. I, I thought it was like an alley or something. I'm sorry. Um, all right, I'll turn down and then park and uh, go to hook it. As you kind of pull over to the side and park, um, you hop out of the car. Bex is like, are, are we on? Are we going? Uh, she's heading on foot, man. I gotta get her. I gotta at least be able to follow her. And not okay. Be okay. And he kind of like wraps up his thing, throws it on the floor, and. Uh, Goes, uh, follows you out, closing the door behind him. Um, as you uh, round the corner and catch your mark again, um, you uh, kind of briskly walk up to kind of like close a little bit of distance so 
you can keep up with her. And uh, as you uh, follow her for a few blocks past banks and storefronts and bustling pedestrians, eventually, um, after a few minutes of zigzagging through the city, uh, she passes under a mustard yellow awning reading the Cosmopolitan and disappears in through the revolving door. Hmm. Alright. Well, go get the car. I'm gonna go inside. Just say I can't go in there anyway. Just uh, park close-ish. Don't be obvious, okay? I mean, sure, you're the sleuth here. Um, he kind of turns, but before he, uh, kind of comes out of your shot, he, tur he turns back to you. Be careful! Or he kind of heads back at a brisk pace, kind of that, uh, power walking back to the car. As you turn to enter the hotel. As you enter... Doo -doo -doo, uh... The, uh, you pass into a marble floored lobby with Victorian style uh, runner carpets and an ornate reception desk. A uh, the receptionist kind of nods to you as you enter and pass. You uh, scan quickly the lobby for any sign of Carter and you see a pair of elevator doors close as the dial begins to ascend the floors. You look and see a staircase right next to the elevator shaft, so you head up and sprint up the stairs as quickly as you can. As you head up the floors, you check the second, the third, finally the fourth, and as you kind of round the corner, you spot Carter as she heads down the hall. As you kind of she glances behind her, and you pull back around the corner and press yourself to the wall. Squeeze your eyes shut as your heart pounds for a moment before you hear the footsteps continue on. As you tentatively peek around the corner, down the hall, she disappears into a room. You quickly and quietly saunter down the hallway, keeping an eye on the door she disappeared behind. And as you approach, you make note of the rune number 420 before turning and making your exit. You wait on the sidewalk for a little while as uh, before you see your car pull around the corner and uh, Bex parks pretty much uh, on the side of the road nearby. As you uh, pop in, he shifts over into the passenger seat. Everything go okay? She almost made me, but I think we're good. All right. Um, I guess all the pieces are in place now. I don't know start to uh, pull around and, or not around but start heading back to the uh the firehouse firehouse okay and as uh the uh sorry do you have something uh just no she was just gonna make a comment about like well hopefully uh hopefully she didn't actually see me and uh she doesn't make a bail so she runs start all over tomorrow Well, I assume if she saw you, which you would have probably seen a reaction of some sort. I, I don't know. You're, you're the expert here. Hopefully not. Hope for the best. Yeah. Plan for the worst. How oh, Samuel always did it. That's a good way to go about it. Speaking right. of, where was he this morning, do you know? Oh, he was recovering from the watch last night. He had been, uh... He was the one who went to the impound last night and broke in and 
you know, they just had a late nighter. Hopefully the other two are done by now. Yeah, we'll see when we get back. And with that, the kind of car rumbles off down the street. And as we kind of flit over and change scenes um, unceremoniously, um, <laughs> the uh, Model T kind of rattles up to speed as <laughs> columns of light flit by as the deep shadows of brownstone buildings and steel skyscrapers become elongated by the falling sun. Livy and Rory cruise back to the firehouse as they discuss what happens next, the meeting or not. I mean, look, I'd feel safer if you were in the car, but I think I need to go into the restaurant alone. Which I get, but I'm just, I'm still not comfortable with it. I mean, I, I hear you and I, and I understand. I just, can we at least have a couple nights like down the block or around the corner? Um. If it's, if it's too much, just, just say it and I'll, I'll back off. I don't think it's a good idea. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. I just I think that if no, it's fine. Give off any sign, it... any if, you know, any hint that there's uh, I don't know trouble in the wings. It, it's a chance that we don't get any of the help that we might. Okay. Um. I I trust you. I trust that you will. <clears throat> yeah, well, it's, look, look, it's just a meeting. That's all it is. Okay, okay. Until it's not. But I have one request. Will you bring out an extra chicken parm? <laughs> I can try. I can try. It's a big ask, but I can try. Okay. Fair enough. At least I got you to laugh. I appreciate it. How long do you think the meeting will go? Ooh. I don't think it'll be that long. I, I think either we're on the same page or we're not. It, you know, um, I'd say if I'm in there for longer than, you know, I don't want to give you a number, but. Yeah, yeah. I just want to have an idea of how long is too long, you know? Sure. Um, Longer than it should take to eat dinner. Got it. Got it. Well, with a nice wine, it could... <laughs> I don't think it's going to be that kind of dinner. <laughs> um, so am, am I aware of the ask for Gabby previously? The... What do you mean that I asked for uh, Mother so, Mary's help? No, 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 no. What wasn't there... It, it, I apologize if I'm wrong, but uh, wasn't there an ask for Rory to turn over Gabby while Livy was yes out? Like when Orsino came to visit me in the mm -hmm. safe house. Mm -hmm. But that wasn't Ors. They or sorry, it was, it was. They basically said that they were going to ask Rory some questions. They were going to both be taken into custody. Rory would okay. be asked some okay. questions and be let go, and Gabby would be. Adopted into uh, the system, basically. Uh, got it. Got it. Um, thank you. So, so what if they ask for Gabby again? I mean, or the letter says, "Do you want to? So you want to burn him?" So, if that, if what they're asking. Mm-hmm. Or what they're offering is not to help burn him. Then I walk out the door. I I just don't want her to be used as some kind of bargaining chip, and and I know that you won't allow it. I just I just feel the need to make sure we're on the same page. Yeah, there is no bargaining with Gabby. We've made that. Well, well even <laughs> even as a 
even as a false bargaining chip. You know what I mean? Sure. I'm not playing games. I don't think Orsino will either. As uh, you kind of have the discussion, I will, as the GM, point out that Orsino did say, come alone. And that doesn't include usually include a, a ride along. Um, sure. If you're willing, if you're ignoring that and doing this anyway, that's fine. I just I wanted to. Yeah, I mean I'll go into the restaurant that. alone, but I'll keep Livy. I mean, L- Livy will jump in the back seat. She'll just she'll just kind of <gasps> hang out on the floor. <laughs> okay. Um. As a uh, make your way into Harlem, the hold on, I, I'm trying to find my. I have to change the order of the uh, scenes. Sorry. Um, no worries. Doo-doo-doo. As uh, Rory, you kind of. Pull into uh, uh, the neighborhood and uh, onto the road. You sl- come to a slow and eventually stop outside a small restaurant with a red neon sign reading Antonio's. As you enter, oh, as you kind of step out of the car and uh, give one last nod to Melly in the back or Livy in the back seat. Um, you uh, walk across the street and over to the uh, restaurant. As you enter, the aromas of red sauce, basil, and uh, cigarettes greet you. The white cloth tables fill the space, and there's a uh, dry bar kind of right next to you as you enter the door. The restaurant is completely empty, save for Orsino sitting near the back finishing up a meal. He uh, nods to you as you enter and uh, stands as you approach and extends his arms out to embrace you. You're looking at me like we're best friends. You didn't trust me. Wasn't it? All right. He kind of sighs and takes a step back. Okay. Did you hear the story you told me? I heard it. I told you. I told you you didn't need to believe me. I, 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 but I'm me. You know? I, I understand. I understand why you did what you did. Okay. But now I'm struggling to trust, too. Well, the, uh, that shows with the, uh, dame you brought with you. Yeah. They come alone. She's, she's with me now. Well. She's part of the package. Then, uh, maybe you should invite little miss in here if she's going to be a part of the conversation. Happily. I'll knock on the glass on the front window and signal Livy to come in. <laughs> this is Livy. The door opens and. Livy or Sino? Or Sino Livy? He nods. Hello. Charmed. <clears throat> You're the one getting in. My Rory all up in these, uh, up into trouble? Hardly so. Yeah. Trouble seems to follow us. If we're being honest. Kind of looks back over to Rory. I get it now. But. Uh... He wanted to bring the cavalry. I told her. It's the two of us or nothing. So. Well, have a seat. You hungry? Can I get you something? You want 
want chicken pie? Yeah. Yeah, I'll have one too. Tony nods kind of from the door and uh, goes back into the kitchen. Look, <clears throat> messy business leads to mistakes. I, uh, not asking you to forget, but I hope you can at least, uh, give me enough to accept what I'm offering. <sighs> Let's get to the point. How about that? Um, obviously, you can take your palms to go if you need to, but, uh, he, uh, pulls a manila envelope from the chair beside him and puts it on the table. So after the other night, I did some digging on Ellsworth. And well, uh, it's all fucking messy to me. But, uh, you know, there's some odd pictures in here and uh, maybe you can make something of it. Okay. He slides the envelope over to you. What about you? What about your business with Ellsworth? Is it done? No, it's ongoing. That's why this is... He kind of looks at Livy. Done with the utmost discretion. He kind of looks back to you. Livy knows how to keep quiet. You say so. Take your word for it. I'll just... Like, I, I looked to Livy, who just kind of gave me like a little nod, as like, I give you my word. Well, now, um, what are you looking for? If you can, uh, just piss in the man's eye, I'd be happy. That's as much as I want out of this. And I just want uh, my name to never come up. How's that going to affect your business, though? Mm. It won't as long as you keep it, uh, you keep your end of the bargain. So if Ellsworth goes down, you don't suffer? Power works in weird ways when when vacancies are made. Who knows? We might be able to move up and all this nonsense. Okay. Something we'll have to handle day by day. It just affords us an opportunity. Sure. <clears throat> Messy, what do you mean? What are these pictures? He just gestures to it as he kind of begins picking the last bit of uh, pasta off his plate. I'll open that glove. As you untie it, you reach inside and find a number of photographs. Pictures from the last 40 years of, well, Ellsworth and seemingly his father. Each one is identical down to the same liver spot on his head. As you kind of flip through the photos, <gasps> each one in a club or at a party or at a political rally, just various different scenarios. And finally, you flip to probably, it's, it's actually the last one, and it, a dozen children around a tentacle face statue. Daniel Ellsworth and Michael Thomas blank the group with proud looks upon their face as a banner with the all-seeing eye adorns the wall behind them. It's the Chapel of Contemplation. Well, bingo. It seems like uh, you know what this fucking shit is. I, mean, I think so. It's... Um been a minute but uh rory those those children they're for their ritual they were for their ritual yeah i remember i remember reading the notes on what happened there how fucked up that was how could they look so proud
Now, I don't know. With... Oh, sorry. Sorry, no, go ahead. I was just going to say, if these are monsters we're dealing with at Orsino, not people. Now, I don't know what you uh, exactly plan to do. As far as I can see it, two ways about this. But uh, this one, I feel like... Uh, might hurt the uh, councilman's campaign pretty significantly. But, uh, the one of the Chapel of Contemplation? Is that what he's talking about? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, technically, that's his father, though, right? It's a little muddy. Right. I mean, it. it's clear to me. Uh, you might not want to believe this, Orsino, but it's pretty clear to me that uh, Ellsworth has been a lot, around a lot longer than uh, your average man should. He's using some fucking dark magic shit. But I know that that's a little, you know... He doesn't seem surprised by that at all. That doesn't phase him. Okay. He just kind of plays with his ring a little bit. Well, yeah. See, you know more than you're letting on. Have you been... Have you seen shit like this before? He kind of looks over his... uh knuckles at you and just I'm showing you what I can obviously I've always kept things close to the chest and under the table like that's no should be no surprise but, uh, I don't do this kind of fucked up shit yeah well what do you propose we do with it? Well, you can leak it to the press if you wanted to, or threaten to leak it to the press. That works better in my experience. Get people to move. Get people to back down. I don't know what you need it for, but it's ammo. And your Very kind nice. of ammo. No guns, no gats. Livy will know what to do with it. We'll give Livy a look. It's not Gabby we're bargaining with. It's this. Oh, bargain? No, no, no. This is no strings attached. This is my uh, gift to you. Sorry, I meant with, um, <laughs> you know, the powers that be. This is our, this is uh, a chip. We haven't felt like we've had a lot of, um, I don't, I can't think of the, the, the you know, chip balls in our court, you okay. know. This is finally maybe one ball in our court. Yeah. But we've got to be really strategic about it. I mean, what the, uh, what made you take this risk? <laughs> Motherfuckers stepped on the wrong person. Yeah, that's what I thought. I don't need to hear any details. I I got in a little bit of a meeting to make it to a little bit later. My wife. And uh, I'm going to leave you here with your chicken palms. They should be out here in a few minutes. He kind of stands up. The chair kind of scoots against the floor. And he... Uh, Nods to each of you before heading out the into the back. Um, just as he's about to walk up the hill, say, "Or oh, Sino." Yeah. Thank you. We're good. He nods and turns and leaves without saying a word. We, uh, right? As, uh, we kind of cut here, we, uh, will hard cut over to the fire, the firehouse. As, uh, the building, the buildings of the, of the islands kind of melt into shipping yards and, uh, warehouses, um, you grow closer to the firehouse. 
brakes squeal slightly as you come to a stop outside. Uh, Livy and Rory, you both um, make your way into the firehouse through the side door. And, uh, as you look around, the firehouse is vacant. Uh, muffled sounds of industry uh, in the distance are all that break the silence. As uh, you kind of give each other a nod and uh, maybe Livy heads off to uh, take a shower and wash the day off. Um, you're it's one of the few moments you have alone. Like, you really haven't been alone since all of you got swept up in the mess. So, these little moments kind of are few and fleeting. You can just kind of be alone with your thoughts. As you kind of do your thing and, uh, self-care and dry off after the shower and you kind of mull through your list of kind of the things to make you feel safe honestly at the end of the day and they'll, it's virtually complete <coughs> everything you could think to do is done but something Something's missing. Maybe it's forgotten. A small detail you can't quite put your finger on. You rummage through your bag. Find the... George's letter again. As you look it over one more time, the words... Like mine and cave all the kind of pop back into your head and remember Georgia was proud of you for delving so deep As you kind of think and this plays in your head a little bit mulls over you hear a, uh, almost a giggle, amused, laugh. <laughs> As you look around, you <coughs> pop open the door. You hear Rory upstairs just playing billiards by himself, practicing, shooting some pool. close the door. You look in the thing. There's nobody around. You close the door. And I swear they just heard something. Must have been the wind. Um, as uh, you kind of head back and just head back over to the sink. You uh, wipe the mirror free, uh, clear and your reflection waves back at you in a way. And uh, there's a little bit of a look that you didn't realize you had. And you see, you hear the laughter once again, but it comes from you. <laughs> as you kind of blink. It's time. What? Don't play innocent with me. You've known. You've known all along. What? 
I don't, I don't understand. A change. You follow these cold shivers down your spine to terrible conclusions. It's only that you here. The reflection raises an eyebrow and stalks forward towards the mirror with a wry smile. Don't be so coy. You were scared. You couldn't do it alone. I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not alone. I, I'm never alone. I, I, I... It's your biggest fear of being alone. Now you'll never be alone. Sometimes, you know, you just need somebody to take the wheel. You get intimately close to the mirror as your hands clasp the edges of the sink. No one saw what we saw. Like, they don't understand. They don't get it. No. <coughs> you don't get it. No. The veil is shattered for us, and we know what lies outside the cave. And we will do all that is necessary to keep us. Keep you safe. I have to. All you have to do is glide over. Someone else take the wheel. Wait. As you shake your head, your reflection can, uh, goes back to properly mirroring yourself. And as you kind of blink and stare in the mirror, nothing happens. As we cut away from here and we cut outside, the uh, side door opens up and Samuel comes in with uh, with Charlie. And uh, shortly after that, more or less everybody files in over the next half hour as Livy exits the bathroom and finishes her pampering and whatnot um everybody kind of moves downstairs and congregates in the uh garage as uh samuels calls a bit of a a meeting as uh samuels gathers everybody around and they kind of form a circle semicircle he uh you see Livy kind of sit behind him, her legs crossed, lounging behind him in the back, looking on as uh, Samuels addresses the group. All right. <clears throat> now everyone is back. What have we found out? Well, I got a room number for Carter. She said the cosmopolitan. Beautiful, beautiful. We can make a move whenever we need to. And then, are, uh, is Gabby all set? She seems to be doing okay, stable at least. Yeah. 
And you're done with the runes? All clear on the runes. Beautiful. So, with all these, all our decks in a row, we got a couple of the uh, old boys uh, coming in tomorrow to help us uh, as backup. Um, my opinion, we've been hunted for long enough. It's time we took the fight to them. With the help of our new allies, we can temporarily blind Weatherwood. We should have a short window while their eyes are closed to make our strike, which is about, you said 12 hours, right, Hank? Yeah. Yeah, the reinforcements will come in after 12 hours, so we have a little bit of wiggle room. That'll give us enough time to do our operation and cut and run, cover our tracks before they get eyes back on us. Hopefully. With all that said, we'll be uh, wiping out their forward operating base with one swift strike so we can loosen their foothold and demoralize the leadership. That should provide us breathing room here in the city to organize and prepare for the next step. If there's, any, if there's no questions, we'll be making a move tomorrow night. And beautiful. All right. As the uh, group disperses and uh, heads up to the lounge, you hear a uh, frantic on the side door. Opening that or what? You're closer. Oh, uh, yeah, I'll just swing the door open. The door? As you uh, head over to the door and swing it open, you reopen the door to reveal a sweaty, dirty, wild eyed William clutching a parcel close to his ch chest and heaving. And that's where we'll end today's session. Cool. William, 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 what do you got? <laughs>